going to be reading from John chapter th- uh, 3, um, before Stuart comes and preaches to us. John chapter 3, which is page 834, if you have a church Bible with you. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is, a, when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light because the works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. I'll just pray and then Stuart will speak to us. Father God, I thank you for these words in your book. Lord, bless Stuart now as he brings God's words to us. Help us to be attentive in the spirit in your hearing. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I'm going to begin in in an interesting place. I'm going to begin in my house on Saturday morning this past week. Now, I like to get up in the morning before anyone else is up and commit my time to God in prayer and to read his word because when the boys get up chaos normally ensues Um, and so what I do is I get up and I pray and I read the word and on Saturday morning I had the pitter patter of feet not so much a pitter patter anymore he's not as small as he used to be Uh, but down the stairs comes Reuben and in his hand is a Rubik's cube seven o'clock on a Saturday morning over Christmas they learned how to do a Rubik's Cube, to complete the Rubik's Cube. They now want to show Daddy how to do the Rubik's Cube. So Reuben says, it's now a good time, Daddy. I say, okay, Saturday morning, no one else about. What excuse do I have? So we both sit down and look at the same thing. And Reuben says, right, this is what you need to do, Daddy. You need to do this algorithm and that algorithm and this way and turn it that way. Just let me have a look and right, do that one and here's the solve and there you go, you've done it. And I said, I haven't done that Rubik's Cube. (laughs) I said, you've done that Rubik's Cube. He said, no, no, you did it. I said, but you were the one that enabled me to do it. And so as he told me all these things, Reuben could look at it and he could see the solution and he could see what he needed to do to achieve it. I looked at the same Rubik's Cube and I saw nothing. I didn't know what he meant, what he'd done. I just had to follow his instructions. And so 
what we see is that two people can look at exactly the same thing and see two completely different things. And so when we look at this situation, what we see is that we have a question that we want answered. How can I be right with God? Now, to, do the, to figure out how to do the Rubik's Cube, you can go on YouTube or you can go to lots of other places and there are videos of people showing you how to do it. So if I want to be right with God, where can I go or who can I go to to answer that question? Well, in all likelihood, you would want to go to a man like Nicodemus. Because Nicodemus is a leader in his generation. Nicodemus is a ruler in Jerusalem. He is a man who knows the law inside out and he knows all the other laws that have been added to it. He is a man to whom many people go to have answers to their questions. And so Nicodemus is the kind of guy that most religious people today would go to to seek answers to questions like that. How can I be right with God? What do I need to do? How do I go about it? The interesting thing is that Nicodemus comes to Jesus because he is looking for an answer. Now let's consider Nicodemus firstly, okay? Nicodemus is a man who acknowledges that God exists. He knows that God exists. He's a man who acknowledges that Jesus is more than most people make him out to be. He even acknowledges that he's a teacher come from God. That's a very special thing. That's like a prophet of the Old Testament. They were waiting for prophets at this time. That's why they got excited about John the Baptist. And so I know you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus knows that Jesus is something special. And so you would think, right, he's a teacher and a ruler in Israel. He's the kind of guy that we would go to, and he has come to Jesus because he knows that Jesus is something special. Aren't there a lot of people like that? When I speak to a Muslim, a Muslim will say to me, yes, we believe in Jesus too. He's a prophet sent from God, just like Nicodemus was effectively saying. Or I might speak to a Mormon and they'll say, yes, Jesus is very special. We acknowledge the Jesus of the Bible. We know that he is God. The Catholic will say, yes, we know of this Jesus. And yet they have the same problem as Nicodemus. As Nicodemus comes to Jesus, the man that we might look to, if we're religious and looking for an answer to the question, how can I be right with God? How does Jesus answer Nicodemus? He answers him in probably the most confusing way imaginable. He says to him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A ruler over Israel, a Pharisee, a man who has acknowledged the special nature and character of Jesus. But Jesus is effectively saying he's blind. So in Matthew 16, of Matthew 15 verse 14, Jesus speaking of the Pharisees says, they are blind guides. They are the blind leading the blind. They can't see. How can they lead anyone? Because they can't see for themselves. And Nicodemus is effectively a man who Jesus has declared blind. But with all his righteousness, look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of God. So what's going on here? When Jesus says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. He's being absolutely honest. If you're sat here today <clears throat> and you don't understand what this man is talking about, you don't see what this man is talking about, this is your problem. If you think about your work colleagues, your friends, your family, 
They think you're mad or deluded or childish. They can't see it. Why can they not see it? Jesus says, because they have not been born again. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And in John uh, chapter 14 and verse 16 uh, to 17, Jesus says this. I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So that's one reason why if you are a Christian today, you can see it and your friends, your family, your work colleagues, they can't. The difference is the spirit of God who dwells with you and is in you. Now in John 16 verses 5 and onwards, Jesus says, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. This is a personal thing. It's an experiential thing. And he says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So the reason that you know and you can see the things that you can see are because of a gift and an act of God responded to by the preaching of the word. And so, as we sit here tonight, we've been given a gift beyond measure. We've been given a gift of knowledge and of sight. And so, when we look at the world, when I go into the world, what I see is that there's a huge problem. I was speaking to a, a young Muslim man in Blackburn yesterday, and he was talking about Islam, and he's giving me all the surahs and the hadith and la la la. And uh, I said, just one second, my friend. I said, ultimately, what's the difference between you and me? And he said, well, I'm a Muslim and you're a Christian. I said, no, no, forget that. What's the main difference between you and I? He said, I, I, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? I said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. With all your knowledge... You have no sight. The reason that I know about the kingdom of God is because God has gifted me a new heart and a new spirit. I've been born again by his grace, by responding to his call and his message. And so that stunted him for a moment. And then he carried on, as is often the case. So we need to be born again to renew our hearts and spirits so that we can then see the kingdom of God. And that's what we require, that's what we desire for our loved ones, don't we? Because what needs to happen is that the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, he needs to lead them into truth. We can share the gospel with them, we can plead with them, we can pray for them, but without a work of the spirit, all is dead, all is not. And so, why does Jesus say it's important, or why does he say, first, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God? Why does he say that first, and then afterwards say, unless you are born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God? Why does he do it in that order? Well, very simply... If you can't see, how can you find the way? If you can't see, how do you, flailing around in the dark, find the way that you need to take to enter the kingdom of God? Because we're spiritually blind, we need someone to guide us first to Christ so that he can give us that gift of the Spirit so that we can be born again, so that we can see the kingdom of God, and we can respond and enter in. That's why the word of God and the proclamation of it is so important. That's why it's prayer and proclamation. 
You need to tell your friends about Christ. You need to tell your friends about his work. You need to tell your friends about his death on the cross. You even need to do that taboo thing and tell them about their sin that led him to the cross. And then you can tell them, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You can be saved from your sin, from hell, and have a place in heaven. And so that's why it's so important that first you can see, and then by the Spirit's guide in that spirit of truth, you can then enter the kingdom of God. And so the question is, do you know this to be true? Can you see the kingdom of God for yourself? Can you see it? And have you entered in? Because, let me be very clear, some people get confused about this. They say in the open air, we'll find out when we get there, won't we? Beyond death, I'll know if your God is right or not. That's what people say to me all the time. And I say, if you find out when you get there, it's too late. When Jesus says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born of spirit and water, you cannot enter. He's not talking about the there and then. He's not talking about you will enter then. He's talking about the here and now. We become part of the kingdom of God, the people of God in the here and now. If you cannot see and therefore cannot enter now, you can't assume that that is going to be the case for you on that day. You must see, you must seek, you must enter now. Today is the day of salvation. And that's why it always grieves me. People say, we'll find out when we get there. No, you can find out here and now. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. And if he saves you, if you are born again, you will be able to see the kingdom and you will desire to enter because you'll see its wonder, you'll see its glory. And if you can't see it, if you haven't been born again, you might say, well, that's all well and good. But what must I do now? What must I do for that to be me? For me to be able to see and to enter the kingdom of God? Well, it's very simple. Um, if it's a problem of blindness, we've got to do exactly what those who were blind did when they met Jesus on the road. They called out to him for mercy. Son of David, have mercy on me. What else can a blind person do? but call out in the hope that the one who is able to heal and to give us our sight will do just that. They knew who Jesus was. And if you know that Jesus can save you, he can make you born again, he can give you that spiritual sight, why don't you call out to him today? Because he had mercy on the blind, he healed many, and he's healing many who are spiritually blind and without hope today. Because when they come to him, when they came to him, if you come to him and say, if you are willing, you can make me clean like the lepers said, or son of David, have mercy on us. He gave them back their sight. Joel 2.32 says, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved you can be born again you can call out you can have the mercy of the son of david the christ of heaven the king of all creation and he can give you your spiritual sight you can see the glory of the kingdom of god you can feel you can see the filthiness of your own sin and you can turn to christ and be saved john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, whoever calls on him, whoever seeks for him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You can, and if you call out, you will see by God's grace and his spirit that you can also receive that spiritual sight and you can enter in. As the apostle says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly. Even Christians have a, an amazing view, but it's not the full view. We've got that to look forward to. So if you're an unbeliever, if you cannot see the kingdom today, 
call out. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. If you're a believer today and you think, I don't have such a glorious view, we see in a mirror dimly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, then I shall know fully. What a glorious salvation it is that we've got. If you're an unbeliever, what a glorious salvation you can have. If only you would call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And if you're born again tonight, give thanks to God because it is a gift of God. The salvation purchased by Jesus Christ is yours now and forevermore because of his grace. Cling on to him, serve him, love him, seek his will for you. And if you haven't repented and put your trust in him, call upon him. Call out with all your heart and keep seeking with all your heart and you shall surely find him. Shall we just pray and then I'll hand it back to Alex for the last part. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are a mighty God. There is no God like you who saves so fully, so completely, so without reservation. You are a God who saves. And we thank you, Lord, that though we are blind by nature, though we have no vision of your glory you by your spirit can enable us to see those glimpses dimly in a mirror and so we pray lord for anyone that hears this message that they might turn and put their trust in the lord jesus christ if as yet they cannot see the kingdom of god let it be that they are like nicodemus who asked for the body of jesus because after speaking with jesus he then went away and he found his sight and he became a disciple of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful testimony. May it be that that is true of someone uh, as they hear this message. May we praise you. May we give you thanks because you are worthy of our praise. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen.